just no chase. Okay, everybody, I need you to listen very, very carefully and attentively to what I'm going to say because I have some very, very valuable, vital information that I need to get out there because new things will be happening. My mention will be going in a new, brand new direction, okay? And in addition... We're all going to be watching a series that'll teach them of um, 30 modern students taught separately, um, going to a 1950s style grammar school. And you all know um, that uh, the brand new Amenton person who will be coming here for a very, very short time, uh, or the Amenton guest rather, is Jenny Gibson, Jennifer Gibson, uh, and her real name was something else, but um, she forgotten what that is, and I don't want to get into that because that's like none of your concern, okay? Uh, I don't want any, you know, any thing that will start conflicts to spread in my mind, mentioned. but no. Her name is Jennifer. Jenny. She looks like a Jenny. She sounds like a Jenny. She's a Jenny. Um, so, um, she will be coming here. And she'll be wearing modern clothing. And she is older than when the show was taped in August of 2005 in Great Britain. Um, so, um, you'll definitely see... You know, if you watch the show, um, you know, she will be watching it with us, and she will also be in a couple of my classes. That's the next thing I'm going to be getting into. So I want to bring you over to the board, and I'm going to have to disconnect this because it is just in the way of what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to have to move this, if I can, okay, that's where that belongs, not over there, okay, not in my area, <laughs> I had to do that, okay, now, I want to talk to you about Everlast Clubis in particular. I want to talk about that. Um, Everlast Clubis. Okay, everybody. So, Everlast Clubis. You have been receiving my emails. You have been looking at my pages. Uh, hearing my announcements that I have made over the intercom day by day, um, over Everlast, I'm like giving you chapters and, you know, little questions and a couple of little mini activities to do along with the weeding. I really, 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 really want to get this book finished up. We have been on to it. We've been moving through it like a snail's pace. And I feel that I will be picking up the habits of my 10th grade biology teacher who did not pace the class right. Because I've already told you all about that. <laughs> so, I think that me and everybody else is really eager to get on with things and start cardinally new. And, you know, tomorrow or the next day... Is going to be the very, very last day of Everlast. Okay, then starting on Thursday and Friday or maybe Wednesday, we're going to be getting into the next novel for the Menton. Okay, I'm going to get into that. Um, you know, you know that's the only part of it. I'll talk about it. Um, but so... This Virgo season, we're not going to do anything astrologically, astrologically related. We're not going to be having a clubus. We're not going to be doing a project for that. 
uh, you're not going to be um, reading the book on the Kindle because I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, kind of, um, it's just, I've just lost interest and, you know, it was getting to a point where I was getting sick and tired of it and bored by it, so I want to start fresh and brand new. However, come Libra season and uh, probably Scorpio and Sagittarian seasons, I'm going to plan on all of those seasons being, you know, um, you know we're going to be reading the book and, you know, doing as we did before. Okay, uh, I definitely have a lot of really, really interesting uh, music for Scorpio and Sagittarius seasons. Sagittarius season, we're going to be, um, you know, the very, very beginning of the Sagittarian medley will be from Frozen. Remember the ya, 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 hey, ya, na, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya. You know, that's what it's going to be. I'm going to kind of steal it, but I'm going to add my own things into it, of course. You know, so it doesn't, you know, feel. So it goes against, you know, it, it follows copyright laws. Um, so um, we're going to be doing that uh, for that season and Scorpio season songs all in minor key. Um, and Labor Season is going to be really beautiful, charming, peaceful, graceful, um, lovable, and, you know, you know, also representing balance and equality. All of those Labor themes, I attempted to have the clubis in Taurus Season, but there was too much. I decided to focus. We will come back to um, reading that book, and there will be a clubis for... Libra, Scorpio, Sag seasons. Okay, so that's what it's going to come down to. I find the Scorpio zodiac sign particularly interesting, um, you know, fascinating because it's so complex, I don't understand it. You know, Libra and Scorpio are very, very, very different. Libra is the light, and Scorpio, ruled by Pluto, is the dark. I'm going to talk all about the contrast of those two, but also what they have in common, based off of what we learn about those signs, particularly if you have a chart, you're planning to join colors. Okay, so I've talked enough about that. Um, also, we have not had an in-person meeting for a while because I have been very, 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 very busy. On teaching remotely online is a very demanding, uh, very difficult, very um, thorough and overwhelming job. Where I have to you know check emails. I have to you know do the this and that for the multiple classes. I set things up, and it takes all of my day and time. And whenever I have the leisure, I just want to do nothing. Um. Besides maybe, you know, you know, weed or, you know, you know, take a walk or something, but the mentioned this is, you know, I thought that, you know, it would be very, very smooth, it would go, you know, swimmingly if, you know, if there would be imperfect balance, balance, another way one thing, scales, see my hands, so anyway, that's another can of worms that we'll get to, but balancing a mentioned duties and also balancing online, you know, education and teaching. Um, I thought it would go 50-50, but one thing is kind of taken over and consumed the other thing. So, I have not had time for this, and so I will definitely take advantage of it. Okay, now, uh, in addition to Jenny Gibson coming to the Amenton, um, I will not be teaching at Kindle Academy. I sent that email out to you on August 25th, and I decided, I, that's, 
I'm biting off more than I could shoot. There's no way that I'm going to have the time and the energy to do that. What am I thinking? So, no. It's just not logical and not right. I could say more, but, you know, suffice it to say, yeah. So, but, uh, there will be a couple clubs, uh, yeah, classes, I want to say, for the Amentin, um, for the cementin that you will need to choose one or the other, okay, which are both going to be English courses. Also, there will be a Spanish 2 course, um, um, you know, Spanish course, and also, also, uh, a 20th century world history course. So pick one or the other from the English courses. Um, the Spanish course is optional, um, however, um, all of you, um, will need to take the 20th century history course. Um, you know, because all of you are in classes at Kind of Academy, especially because of the new educational system, you know, because it just, you know, schools started up, and I don't know what government was thinking. Having people in classrooms, having to wear masks, and being in person, all that. Um, yeah, they'll just, no, 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 no. If I was the governor, they'd all be remote. Anyway. So, you all taking, you know, foreign language courses, I hope. If you're more interested in the French language or the German language, you can choose one of those. I will be teaching two English courses, one Spanish, and then 20th century world history. Okay, I really, 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 really want to make this concise and straightforward and informative and, you know, and to the point, really. Okay, um, so I want to get down to it. So I've written most of the courses. I've written everything except 20th century world history. I'm going to do that on the uh, on the back when we're all done with this. So, um, uh, actually here, let's see here. So, um, the two literature courses that I'm going to be teaching um, are going to be uh, American literature and also um, uh, and I'm um, in also English literature. So, um, Abby and all the Pittsburgh dance moms and Kathy, they all went back home. Because we're done. We already had the concert on August 22nd. Uh, around Abby's birthday, which is uh, September 22nd. Uh, that will be our next concert where we're going to get into such things as the Jungle Plan. And I'm going to tell you what that is and why I call it that. And also, um, for the songs honoring and celebrating her. Okay? Now, also just a little uh, reminder, uh, on August 28th, on Friday, that was Wabimbi Talei Tuck's birthday, and I was not here. Um, I was, you know, if you all wondered who I was, I was at her house. Um, you know, well, she was celebrating her birthday with her friends and her family, and, um, I actually took a, um, you know, I actually drove down, um, with my, uh, curator and another friend of mine down to, uh, Kansas City to go to her house and, uh, celebrate her birthday, and her daughter, of course, was there. Um, she, um, you know, we had Mexican food for dinner. Um, you know, another food that she really, really likes is German food. And she's also an Irish food fan, so she, you know, she likes things like Wiener Schnitzel and pork chops and, you know, witch hearty food and all that kind of thing. She's not a light eater, although... You know, being a Virgo son, um, she, you know, puts health very seriously and is very professional, 
basically in command and control. And she also has the moon in um, Sagittarius in the, I believe it is in the, um, the fifth house. So, she's very, very fiery. She has quite a bit of fire in her chart, and so she's very optimistic, happy-go-lucky. She likes to explore the world, and she loves to travel, uh, adventure, um, new types of foods, new languages, um, so all those types of great things, and she really reminds me of my high school Spanish one teacher, uh, who also had the moon in Sagittarius and Sun in Virgo. Uh, she was born on uh, September 15th. So anyway, um, long story short. Uh, okay, so American Lit focuses on um, very, very important, you know, the most, you know, it focuses on American literature, um, but by American authors, books that are very, you know, are classic books, um, that they are, you know, the most well-loved books and the most, you know, you know, significant, um, you know, books in all of, you know, American literature. In a way, it is the ultimate and, you know, really most important best course you will take because, um, in these books outline, um, you know, that, you know, all the, you know, the best life lessons. It basically is like a life skills course through, you know, literature. And we focus not only on the, you know, plot of everything, but the writing styles and the themes and all of the, you know, messages and morals throughout all of the books. So the big theme for American Lit, by the way, um, this is an exact cop-out of what I am, you know, all the things that I am teaching, um, you know, for my remote classes. Um, so these are all the things that we're going to be doing. I thought maybe changing a couple of things, but ah, so much going on. I have three, I'm going to be having three books going on at the same time. Crazy town. I'm going to be having remote, maybe not focus on the other book, focus on something else, and then, you know, obviously changing the milk and what, and also then the English what, so that's, you know, three books, too many at one time, so, yeah, so, I'm um, not going to do that, so I thought that it would be not only easy with that way, but I also think that these books are, I think that you're really, really going to enjoy these, and you know, the whole, you know, curriculum of, um, American Lit, um, because I was reading in a yearbook that the English teachers over there, including myself, you know, really, really talk about, um, you, you know, what is, you know, what would be fun, um, you know, and interesting to students, what would they enjoy? reading, but, you know, would also fall under the <laughs> governmental guidelines and everything. It's a very, very complicated process, and I am part of that. And so I, you know, what, you know, also kind of implemented my ideas and, you know, units in there as well. So, um, so I'm sure that you're all eager to know what is taught in American Lit. Uh, well, um, most of these are novel units, except for one thing at the very, very end, which explores your passions, which is a TED Talk about something you're passionate about. So, um, Living by Code is the big theme. Wex Sex for Life is what we're going to be starting if you're planning to take this class. Um, you know, what you carry with you, that's physical objects, but also, um, what you, you know, invisibly, you know, you know, feelings or, you know, emotions, you know, that you carry with you mentally, 
and you know emotionally and then both of those things all of those things whether they'll be a help to you or a hindrance to you and then I believe in the loving body code um, so and then endurance and humility um, you know endurance pushing through humility being humble and empathetic of others windows to the world um, all found in The Old Man in the Sea, which is going to be one of the books. By the way, if you did not see Greta South Hall's, um, um, award-winning, groundbreaking graduation 2019 speech for the Indianola High School graduates, um, please do see that. I think that, um, you know, that speech was very, very, um, well done. And definitely kind of makes something click and definitely, you know, inspires and, um, you know, really, really makes you think and, um, really, really gravitating. Um, although I do think that there is some things in there that she should have been more specific on, as you will find, and it also has some sarcasm and dry humor in there as well. You know, she goes through all of the different, you know, lessons that you learn from all, you know, all of the books, you know, and all of the English courses, and, you know, including the, you know, you know lit and everything. Um, but I think that she could have done a better job of the actual lessons concretely from those other novels. But... For the most part, her speech, taking lessons, life lessons from books, it, the biggest part is the old man and the sea, and I really, really hope that there wasn't a whole lot of spoilers for that. And I think if you know kind of the background of the story, you know, you know already that it's about a guy and an old, an old man with, you know, you know, I don't want to tell you, but, so anyway, um, so that is one of the courses, um, uh, the books that we get into for that course is, I mean, all the units living by a cone, which is of the world, um, we could also do, um, Weeding Chains, which is a Revolutionary War, um, uh, contemporary novel. Glass Castle, and that's one that I came up with. Glass Castle, Long Walk, and then the TED Talk project by the early end of the year. So, well, not the year, obviously, but, you know, in May. All throughout May and maybe the end of April. Um, so, yeah, that's all of the things that we do, Old Man in the Sea, and The Great Gatsby, uh, and in, um, and in the, um, what's it called? And then the other one is English Lit. And the only novel that I have planned for that is 1984. So, if you're going to be in American Lit, the, the novel that you'll be reading is The Old Man and the Sea, but prior to that, reading the short story, The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, to understand Rex Sex for Life, and you're going to be doing uh, a Living Quarter Journal to get personal with that, and then also based off of the characters uh, in that story with that same concept. Um, so then, if you're in English Lit, then the novel is going to be 1984. You know, I've you know, been doing some thinking, and, um, I, I'm just kind of, you know, t tired of the fantasy fiction. I just want something that I can open my mind's eye up to. I'm sure for everybody here as well. Uh, that is going to be you know, relatable, and I wanted something, um, I was in the mood for reading something significant, um, you know, uh, great literature, um, you know, you know, written very, very well, it's famous lines, it's, you know, very, very, you know, controversial themes and everything, 
and it's a really, really great, amazing storyline. And it's a science fiction novel which explores the ideas of Big Brother and society where the government puts tabs and controls people. Um, so, you, you know, futuristically. Um, so, uh, yeah, 1984, George Orwell, how he thought it would look, obviously, but it's not how, you know, and he lived the same time that Hemingway lived, you know, when you learn about Ernest Hemingway's story, he really suffered through drinking addiction and, um, depression, uh, and George Orwell was around kind of the, you know, 1930s, if you've heard of Animal Farm, that's his, uh, that's, a, that's, you know, another really, really famous book, uh, by him about these animals who, um, challenge the farmers and, um, create a society and it really, you know, it's very, you know, they write in really, really similar ways where there's a lot of symbolism where it's so... It you was know, simple, like the whole idea of Animal Farm. Oh, you know, Animal Farm, you know, you know, good and, you know, easy to understand. But it gets deeper than that because it stands for much bigger um, ideas of human society and how it functions. Um, but, but, you know, written through animals, kind of, you know, putting them as humans animals or humans in that book, and if you think that the idea is, you know, obviously where they're talking, um, George Orwell and the big ideas and everything, they wonder why something non-realistic is that. It's non-realistic, but it's, but, very, very realistic. So, um, but anyway, uh, that's not what we're going to be reading necessarily. If you've heard of Fahrenheit 451, that's another book in my library. Um, um, you know, where people burn books because ideas and knowledge are dangerous. dangerous. Um, in a futuristic society, then that's really, really, uh, that will definitely peel well with and also definitely be a good candidate to go up against Old Man in the Sea. I don't really have any plans for that. I'm just going to kind of take it as it comes. I have a whole book list, and this was on the Great American Read 100 book list. So that's why we're going to be um, getting into that. Okay, so it is a classic. So... Um, to, um, so what's going to be happening is, um, yeah. So tomorrow, whenever I am free, maybe in the afternoon, I will let you know, because I really, really don't know. I'll send you an email, and we'll be coming here, and we will be, um, going over Everlust. We, you know, we'll be going over what happens. Uh, it will not really be filmed. It will be unfilmed, okay? Um, but that is um, just what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, going over all the stuff that you should have read, okay? Uh, and all the important themes of that as well. And then, um, let's see, let's see. Oh, uh, Jennifer will be coming tomorrow. Um... At around 3.30. Yep, so she'll be arriving. Uh, and let me see here. So we'll do a little honorary song for her. Um, well, not really. I don't think that we will. With all the stuff I have going on. I'm trying to think here. Um, what else? Yeah, that's really all that I can think of uh, for that, which we'll be going over. Uh, tomorrow is going to be a American Lit class right after the meeting with Everlast people. We're going to be delving into the very, very first activity, which is um, remote learning space dump. 
journal, and then the day after that is going to be reading the things they carried uh, up until Friday, and then um, you have um, you know the weekend, which we're going to be meeting on the weekend. On this Hemingway documentary, Old Man in the Sea, those are the plans for bottom line, and uh, Angel Schlitz not going to be starting up until later this week, probably, probably on Friday, um, you know, Thursday or Friday, I'll let you all know. So then Spanish, um, which is going to be actually starting up, um, um, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so it's going to be starting up on Wednesday. It's going to be beginning on Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday, um, um, that's going to be right after the American Lit. So, um, late afternoon, you'll find out how that all works. I'm not quick, I'm not scheduled time person. Then, right after that is going to be uh, if you're in my 20th century history, you're going to be uh, getting into imperialism for that. And we're also going to be doing, uh, right after that, a World War I um, map activity. Okay, so that is all I really, really, really want to go over with you. I know that it was a lot of information. I just wanted to do that for the purpose of getting it out there and not for the purpose of yelling myself talk. <laughs> so, uh, I needed to do this one time or another, and this is the time that I did it. Okay, so all of you have a wonderful evening. Wind down, and tomorrow will be the brand new start of the new day.